Our first guest tonight is an Academy and Golden Globe award-winning actor you know from the hit TV series Fargo. In films such as Sling Blade, Bad Santa, and Friday Night Lights, he stars in the fourth and final season of Goliath, which is now streaming on Amazon Prime Video. Let's take a look. Let's put this to bed for 10 million. Zach's and Tillinger and Russell Drug flooded this country of billions of pills. You get them hooked and you sell them more. People die, who gives a <laughs> You can always hook a new customer with a bad back. You know, George Zach's had the balls to give out free 30-day prescriptions to new patients. Zach's Pharma is settled. Yeah, not on my watch. Your clients have been reckless. They killed over 200,000 people for profit. That's a targeted business plan. Now, I may be new here, Maybe I'm just getting up to speed, but I'm in the mood to stick my fist up your ass and pull out billions. You get it? Please welcome back to the show, Billy Bob Thornton. How are you, friend? Hey, what's up, Seth? That's a hell of a clip they sent along. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Oh, and that's just one of many, many gems. <laughs> So um, I obviously this has been a difficult couple of years for a lot of people, but I did not know uh, that you had this added negative element that you are a germaphobe, which must have made it uh, especially hard. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I've always been that way. I've got, you know, a few phobias and uh, uh, I, I really didn't change when the pandemic came along. Uh, I was already doing all that stuff anyway. You know, it's like, you know, wash your hands constantly. I already do. So, yeah, worked out nice. You were one of those people who already had gloves at your house? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> hat, hat suits, everything. Uh, so one thing that you were able to do at home, which must have made it a little bit nicer, uh, you're also a musician. Uh, you have a band. Uh, and is it true that you recorded four albums uh, since this thing started? Uh, three, yeah, okay. we did uh, we did three albums, uh, which uh, was pretty nice because when we went to the recording studio, we just you know it was kind of a bubble there also, and uh, yeah, so we have three new Box Masters albums, including a a Christmas album that we're putting out in November, which is not your typical Christmas album. It's not Let It Snow, Let It Snow, you know. Uh, it's a little darker, a little. Uh, sadder you know than most christmas albums might be well i i think we'd expect nothing less from from bad santa you know uh, exactly <laughs> yeah and now is that uh i is that captain beefheart uh behind you that is absolutely captain beefheart yes do you have a lot yeah. of uh, of your favorite uh, photos of your favorite artists on, on the wall at your home or is he a special uh special exception well, no, I, uh, I'm actually in the recording studio right now in the lounge of the recording studio that we have out here in California. And uh, I was friends with a famous photographer named Jim Marshall. And uh, Jim photographed, you know, everybody back in the day. And uh, he was quite a character. And I have a collection of Jim's uh, photos here. And we had a deal, Jim and I, uh, he would sell me one, which weren't cheap. <laughs> and uh, he would sell me one and he would give me one. So that was really cool. And uh, he knew that I was a big fan of Frank Zappa and Beefheart and all of them. And so he would always give me their photos if I would buy a Janis Joplin or whatever. I, I read an article about uh, uh, one of my favorite artists, Warren Zevon, that talked about a time that he was uh, just stopped by your studio and, and was just hanging out and, and actually recorded some stuff there. Was, was he someone that you were lucky enough to know long term or was that just a one time thing? No, he, uh, I knew Warren since the late 80s uh, when I was uh, I was living on an, in an apartment building in, on Kings Road in L.A. in West Hollywood. And Warren was my neighbor. He lived in the building too. And uh, you know how at apartment buildings, you have this uh, bank of uh, mailboxes, you know, go check your mail before you go up to your apartment. And the first time I met Warren, we didn't meet through the entertainment business. We met at the mailbox and uh, I have severe OCD and so did Warren. And uh, he was standing next to me checking his mail and I opened my mailbox and pulled the mail out, put it back in, closed it, opened it again. I did that three times and he was watching and he goes, you have it too, huh? 
<laughs> and I go, yeah, I do. So then we we got to be friends, and and it became a competition on who had the worst OCD. <laughs> and and by the way, as bad as mine is, he won. <laughs> and uh, so, um, but he ended up uh, on his last album, uh, you know, before he passed away. Uh, he used to come to the house a lot, and we hung out quite a bit. And uh, he recorded about three of the songs for his last album in my old studio that I'd bought from Slash. And uh, he actually did Knocking on Heaven's Door in my studio, which was pretty chilling because, you know, Warren knew he was dying. And uh, when he recorded that in the studio, I, I'll never forget just sitting there listening. I, I did background vocals with a couple of other guys on that song with him. And... Uh, <laughs> It was pretty chilling. Yeah, I mean, I remember, you know, that when that album came out and listening to him sing that song, and obviously you were aware that, you know, he knew uh, what his diagnosis was. Uh, so I can only imagine, as, as sort of haunting as it was to listen to it off, uh, off the album, I can't imagine what it was like uh, to record it uh, with him. What a, what a piece of uh, a history that is. No, it was, it was amazing. And I remember that night, uh, Warren had a silver ring that he wore. It was just kind of a square silver ring. Uh, didn't have any markings on it or anything. And he said, I've worn this ring for a long time. And he said, I want you to have it. And Warren had a very dark sense of humor. <laughs> and uh, he handed it to me and I, I held it there. And he looked at me and he said, uh, you're not going to wear it, are you? <laughs> I said, no, of course not. And he goes, I knew you wouldn't. 